Hello and welcome. In this tutorial I want to show you how to build a uh, speedometer that corresponds with the vehicle speed. But first I want to thank you all for the support you're giving me. You guys are all amazing. Thank you. To build a speedometer first, you may know this, first you need a uh, UI. We're gonna use images. So first just create an image and it will automatically make a canvas. In the canvas don't forget to set the, the UI scale mode to scale with uh, the screen size and give the the reference resolution I always give it 1280 by 720 so instead of just creating a image straight away I'm gonna delete that and inside the canvas I'm gonna create a empty material empty object and we're gonna call it speedometer the reason I'm doing that is just to keep it uh, a little bit more organized I'm gonna give more width and height say 400 maybe I don't know maybe 200 maybe 400 is too much and then I'm gonna do the image this one is gonna be the needle and duplicate that this is gonna be the speedo these are the images we're gonna use maybe you can't even see it because it's all red, all in white this is the speedo and this is the, the needle. The reason I'm doing them white is because when I put them inside the these uh, pictures, which I can't do, they have to be sprites first. So of course make them uh, sprites. And if you put this into the needle, let's disable this one, there's our needle make it a little bit bigger okay this is our needle so the reason I've made them white is so that now we can do whatever color we want we can even do black so I'm gonna leave it like blue and maybe I don't know you can leave it wherever you want next we're gonna do the speedo hit apply re-enable that and put this inside the source so there is our uh, speedo after having positioned the the speedometer when you grab the z-axis the the needle should follow this uh, motion now to put this in code we need two values we need the first value is the value that the needle represents the zero kilometers per hour or miles the second value would be the maximum value so now let's make this correspond with the, the speed of the vehicle. To do that, I'm going to create a new game object and I'm going to call this game manager. And I'm going to create a new script called the same game manager. Apply the script into the game manager and open up the script. To import the needle, you may know this, it's simple. Game object, actually public first game object needle next we want to do a function that updates the needle we're gonna call it private void update needle and now we're gonna need the two values that I told you about so I'm gonna say private float and the first one is gonna be start position and the second one is end position now to calculate this we need a uh, third float variable. we could just initialize it every single frame but instead we're gonna and we're going to create a new private variable, for private variable. and we're going to call it desired position and in here we're going to we're going to do our meet our function we're going to say desired position is equal to starting position or the zero position minus the maximum uh, position or the, the end position now for the second argument we're going to need the, the speed that the vehicle is going. For that we're gonna have to import that speed. Once you've defined a vehicle speed, we'll import that later from another from the other script. We're gonna need a, a value between 0 and 1 that says the 0 is, uh, is basically 0 and the max value is in our case 180. So we're gonna have to say vehicle speed is uh, we're actually gonna need a new float. I'll just call it temporary equal to vehicle speed 
slash 180. Now this line right here is going to give us a value from, from 0 to 1. Now to actually rotate the needle, we're going to use uh, Euler, Euler uh, angles. So we're going to say needle dot transform dot Euler angles is equal to new vector 3 with the parameters 0, 0 and the formula. Okay, so in the third parameters, we're going to have to write. For now, we're just going to write these values and then I'll try to explain them what they mean. One thing I forgot to initialize is that I've made this private and this is not initialized. So I'm going to hard code this and I'm going to say the start position is at two, 220. Let's put an F there. And the end position was minus 41. Now that let's get the the vehicle speed, which is uh, carried in into the, the card game object. So we we'll already have a uh, KPH. We're just going to have to import it. A public, say in the update, the rr.kph if, yeah is equal to vehicle speed and now let's let's just uh, drag and drop this is the controller yeah and this is the needle let's hit play nothing happens perfect we forgot to update it instead of update i like to use fix it, fixed update okay i've made a, a slight mistake that I clamped the KPA. This should be the other way around. Scratch that. Okay, now our Speedometer is working. One thing I want to quickly add is a booster. Okay, you you cannot add this if you don't want to, but I am just gonna do a if input manager dot boosting. Then I want to add add force to the rigid body. Okay, if you don't know what these values are, uh, they are uh, all this line does is adds force. And instead of giving the vector three and going in here and looking where the forward is, we can just write vector three dot forward times a value we want to boost. I've just defaulted a value to one thousand. And now um, I have to build a function boosting into the input manager. As you can see, we have a error. If we go to input manager, uh, let's do this uh, the old school way. Let's say if input dot get key dot. Uh, okay, I just I'm just checking uh, if I'm pressing left shift every single frame. Okay, hit save, and this should work now. Yeah, we have thrust, and now let's see. Thrust is uh, adding force backwards, so we're gonna have to add a minus in here. Let's give some more power. Yeah, it's boosting. And it's going outside the bounds. Okay, perfect. 